Hey guys, welcome back to Rocky Mountain Homestead. Today I'm in the kitchen basically all day long um, doing a lot of canning, lots of pressure canning, water bath canning going on. I want to take you guys along and share with you how to pressure can corn on the cob. Kind of straight to the point video, but it'll be pretty easy for you to follow if you're a beginner. I'm going to put a, a few little tidbits of information um, into the video as well. Um, if you're new, some different ways you could do things, optional things. And um, yeah, so I'm going to share with you guys how to get this up on your pantry shelf and make it shelf stable and safe for your family. Pressure canning can be intimidating, but I promise you, once you step out and do it, it is, it's so easy. You're going to wish that you started a long time ago. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first what I'm doing is just taking the ears of corn and what you want to do for your first step of preparation is husk the corn and remove the silk. So I am going to do this and then I'll bring you back. with farm fresh things that you're gonna find life you're gonna find some creepy crawlies um, my chickens will love these I'm probably just gonna toss it to them but anyway um, I will show you what to do if you had um, some things eating away at your corn on the cob I am now going to put the ears of corn in here and get them washed up um, in the sink you can and yeah, you can get the rest of the silk off. You can wait till you have your kernels already cut and put them um, in like a steamer type pot with the holes and you could rinse the corn kernels that way. But I personally like doing it while they're like this. Okay, now after the ears of corn are all washed up and ready to go, I'm going to share with you. Um, there's still actually a little bit of silk on these, but I did wash them up. I'm going to share with you guys what to do. Um, when you are, you know, husking your corn, it's really convenient if you leave this part on. Some of them are on, some of them I was going too fast and it came off. Um, but I'm going to show you real quick a little trick you can do. And I got my bunt pan right here. You can just stick this in here, you guys. Sorry, my guinea fowl are so loud right now. <laughs> They're outside my kitchen window. They're just, I love them, but... They're really loud right now. Anyway, I just take that and I stick it through to kind of hold it in place. And you'll find that's really easy um, to do. Um, a lot easier than holding it in place. But you take a serrated knife and then all your corn kernels are going to fall into the bunt pan. This one was not, this did not have anything living on it and eating at it. So there's no area for me to cut off. But parts like this that are just yucky from stuff being on it. Um, you can just cut, I just cut it back a little bit away from it, but enough where, you know, uh, enough away from it. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and cut this corn. So you're gonna take your knife and just kind of cut down with a serrated knife edge. And like I said, it's all going to fall into the bun pan and collect and you're not going to have to pick off little pieces on a flat surface um, it's just already in there so look at that it just fell in there beautifully and that's exactly what we want so um, I'm going to continue just cutting the kernels off and I will bring you back when I am done Okay, so I have this corn collected. I'm going to do more if I have room in the jars um, because my pressure canner has seven quarts um, so far in it. So 
Um, I'm going to do the next step. I'm probably going to just save these and give these to our chickens um, because they like, you can actually give them corn husks, but there's not that much nutritional value in it. But um, I know that they will like the corn cobs and they're still little pieces that just you know, I came to the bottom and, um, they stayed on. So I'm going to give that to our animals outside. And just in case anybody does want to see, I can just do this now. It's not going to hurt anything. Like I said, you can use a strainer pot. Um, there's still some silk in here. You can use a strainer pot, just dump it into this, fill it up with cold water. And if you give the the corn kernels are rinsed this way if you'd like. Like I said, I just personally um, like to do it um, before I cut the kernels, but either way is up to you. But this is a way as well. Um, I'm just going to get some of these corn soaks that are still in here out and give it a good rinse. There you go. That's another way you can rinse your corn. Okay, and once you have your corn ready to go, there's two ways of doing this. You can do raw pack, which is what I prefer, and that is loosely putting corn kernels into a jar and then adding boiling water on top. Or you can do a hot pack method, and what you're going to do is for every four cups of corn kernels, you're gonna add one cup of boiling water and put that in a pot and you would bring that to a boil over medium high heat and then you would reduce the heat and you would want to boil that gently for five minutes until heated through now me personally when you're pressure canning it is already cooking inside of the pressure canner under um, a lot of heat so i personally think it's best to just um do the raw pack method and I think it comes out tasting better and it's better quality altogether. I had to buy this at Ace Hardware down the hill from us because I had lost our regulator. I always store all my parts together um, always in the box and somehow my husband was putting a water heater in our mechanical room and that's where all my big things are stored. Um, so I am hoping this is the right one. Um, but they do have replacement parts. I ordered one on Amazon too. And it says it fits Presto pressure canners except, and I don't see mine as being an except. So, but anyway, always keep replacement parts on hand. Um, I, I feel that's very important. Because so now I have all my jars ready. I don't know how much this is actually going to fill up, but they're sanitized, ready to go. I got my lids in hot water back here with all my things ready to go, a little thing of vinegar, um, in case you are new to this. I, I usually try to put this in all my steps, um, but anyway, always wipe the rims of your jars after. You never know what kind of residue you're getting on it when you're filling these. And at this point, I'm ready to go. I'm just waiting on some water to heat to almost boiling um, to pour in on top of the corn so I can get started filling up the corn. Okay. We got a second notification that there is a second mount line kill in our area. So, gotta be careful of the kids and the dogs outside. Anyway, um, okay, so I got my corn ready to go. I'm going to start filling it. And whether you use pints or quarts, it doesn't matter. That's your preference. We are a family of 10. So honestly, this isn't even enough. When we make canned vegetables with a dinner, it takes like four cans of vegetables um, and there's like nothing left afterwards. So I'm probably gonna need to use two of these every time we have a meal. <laughs> um, so I am honestly thankful we did pick a lot of corn because I, I am going to be going through a lot of this when we do use it for meals. Um, so I am going to fill this and you want to fill this. Sorry about that. Um, but my kids are outside playing and my husband's outside doing something anyway. Um, so you're going to want to fill this. I just saw a part that I didn't want in here. Yep, there it is. Somehow it's going to be a little 
parts and pieces. I just found a husk, even though I washed everything and peeled it good. Um, you're going to want to fill this to one inch headspace um, with a generous one inch headspace. Um, and I'm going to take this and measure. You don't want to pack this down at all. You want to pack this loosely inside. So this is, and you really don't want to shake it down. Um, but I was trying to just get that top piece. Okay. Um, anyway, let's see. This is about, yeah, this is one inch headspace right here. All the way around. So what that is going to look like, um, this is basically your measuring tool. That's an inch. And that's a good, if you can even see it, um, that's a good inch headspace. So I'm going to continue filling all these jars and uh, I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, just a note to self, <laughs> found out the hard way. It's been a couple minutes. It's amazing that like it's really a second on video, but it's been a long time. So I realized nine corn cobs will get you two quarts. So nine corn cobs. I had two quarts originally filled and had to go back to do the others. So I'm just getting, there's still teeny tiny pieces of silk in here. Um, even though I use my vegetable brush. So I'm going to now add in salt. And what I am using for salt is the Mrs. Wages at pickling and canning salt for clear canning. Um, and I have a teaspoon. Now, if you're doing pints, you can add in half a teaspoon of salt. I am doing quarts, so I'm going to use one teaspoon of salt. This is optional, you don't have to add salt. Um, me personally, I like to, so I'm just going to put in one teaspoon of salt into these. You can wait until you use the corn to add in your salt while you're cooking it, but me personally, I just like adding it in now. Um, once again, optional. You don't have to add it in right now. And then I have water that is pretty much um, boiled over here. And I'm just going to add this in on top of my corn to about one inch headspace. So I'm just going to fill it up a little ways. You can always take it out if you fill it up too much, but you are also going to be debubbling to check for headspace. So, hopefully I have enough water. I might, I might not. Oh, it's getting a little low. So I know that's close to about one inch head space. And so now I'm going to find my debubbling tool. <laughs> there it is. I am going to debubble this now. And if you're new to that term, you're just going in and out around. Um, I like to do this and just press against it. You're just getting air bubbles out is what you're doing. There we go. My kids are screaming outside. <laughs> One of the guys that works for my husband is outside with the excavator, moving some asphalt, some recycled asphalt um, around in our driveway. We had some dumped, just trying to get things a little bit ready for snow because we do have snow in the forecast. Don't know if it's going to stick, but it's going to get cold in a couple of days. So uh, <laughs> I've been trying to be a busybody and finish my to-dos up that I want to have done. Lots of outside things we're trying to wrap up. And um, that's one of them. And then the road my husband did, um, we're trying to get that a little bit more finished and um, put some huge rocks on the edge of the road he jackhammered and carved through our property just to uh, try and have a little barrier because <laughs> come winter and fall, 
that can get a little crazy. So we're just trying to make sure there's an edge to it. All right. So there we go. This is done. We can readjust the headspace if we need to by adding more water. And yep, I probably am going to. This one's good. That one's okay. It's not bad. It's slightly, slightly off. But I'm going to add more anyway. All right. I needed two hands for that because I held this in one hand and poured the hot water with the other. So we are at an inch all around for all of these. So an inch headspace. So we are good to go ahead and wipe the rim. And I am just going to take my cloth dipped in vinegar and go around the edges and make sure there's no residue, no liquid from the corn. I'm going to compromise the seal. Once you get your lids on, you want to make sure you're good. Um, I'm going to take my lids and place them on. These have been sitting in hot water. All right, got my lids. Now we're gonna get our rings and we're just going to do them fingertip tight. So that means as far as your fingers can turn them, you don't want to really screw it on there tight. I actually saw some extra corn on the cob. I might freeze that because I am not doing another batch of this. I have so much to do. I had 10 pounds of jalapeno peppers from Azure Standard and our stupid fridges in our garage, they freeze everything that goes into it. So like, well, bags of salad that get frozen. It's so annoying. And anyway, just put the peppers in there last night from Azure and they're like rock hard. And then as they thaw, like on this side, it's super squishy. So annoying. So I'm like picking through which ones are like waterlogged now and which ones aren't, but I need to get those canned up next. Um, I got a lot of canning to do. This is going to be an all day and evening thing. I did start late, um, so that's not helpful. <laughs> I have a little fly in here. Must have came in through the door. All right, now I got my three quarts of water in here. You're gonna do whatever your manual says for your pressure canner, um, but this is my Presto 23 quart pressure canner and that is three quarts of water. Um, so I, I have had that simmering very important. You want it to be the same temperature as your jars. And because I poured boiling water into my jars, um, you don't want to shock it and submerge it in cold water. So I already have this heat on high and I'm going to place my lid. Okay. This has been boiling for a little while on high heat. Um, I am just waiting for this little thing to pop up. Um, if you're a beginner, you might not um, know these steps of what to look for. So I just want to capture it for you guys. I try to do that in my canning videos just in case somebody new is um, watching. So this has been on high heat since I added the jars. And here it goes. There we go. Um, I caught it. Sometimes I don't capture it. But anyway, it's been about 25 minutes. This has been on high heat. Um, for this to pop up. So once you see that pop up, so what you can do at this point is you can pop your regulator on um, right now. Once this has popped up, I personally like to let it go for about five minutes, five to 10 more minutes, um, just to be sure all the air is out of the pressure canner. So right now you could put your regulator on, but me, I wait at least an additional five minutes. Okay, I got a nice steady stream of steam and I am going to pop that on because it's been about five minutes. This is going to gradually, you want this to gradually go up. <clears throat> you don't want it to jump, so you want to adjust your heat. I have a gas range right now. Mine's like a little bit under high. It's on a eight um, for the heat. But you want to do this slow and steady. So my... PSI that I need to get to is 14. Um, so this takes a little bit of time for it to climb gradually, but you don't want siphoning and you don't want swings in your, um, in your amount of pressure. Like you don't want it to go way up and then drop. 
Sorry about that. The dog has to go to the bathroom <laughs> and I have to deal with that. Um, anyway, so you want to gradually, just steadily let this climb to where you need it to be. You don't want to have it jump around um, back and forth. So I'm going to let this climb to 5 PSI. Okay, we are close enough. Yep, okay, we are on a 5 now. So now that I am on 5, I am going to drop my heat down to 5. Um, which is about medium heat. So my gas range is now on a level five and my next PSI that I want it to go to is going to be a nine before I drop it again. So to get to five, this took about three, I don't know, maybe three and a half minutes to reach that. So this you want to sit here. You don't want, sorry for the moving. My foot's actually hurting. So I'm trying to adjust um, myself here. But anyway, you want to stick around for this process and do something in the kitchen. I am cleaning up my mess before I do my next canning session, which is going to be water bath canning while this is going. Um, but anyway, just stay close and watch the gauge. It's very important. We're right at about nine PSI. So I'm going to drop this slowly down to about three and a half on my gas range. Okay, I am at about 13. So now what I'm going to do is lower mine to about a two and a half. Okay, now that I am at my PSI that I need to be at, which is 14, I'm going to gradually lower this a little bit. Um, it, it ends up being a little bit above low. So when you reach your PSI that you need to be at, you never want it to go down below that number. You want it to stay at that number or even a little bit above. Going a little bit above is not a big deal. It is better to be a little bit more than a little less. Um, if you go below your PSI at all, you need to restart. You need to get it back up to the proper PSI number and you need to restart your timer all over again, even if you only had a couple minutes left. So very important. I usually will let mine go a little bit. The sweet spot for mine is in between the 14 and 15. Sometimes it'll go all the way up to the 15. See how it's a little bit off the 14 line? That's fine. I'd rather it be a little bit over than to go under or close to being under at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer. And the directions in the ball canning book for pints is 55 minutes. For quarts is 85 minutes. Because I have quarts, I'm going to set my timer for 85 minutes. And I will bring you back when I'm done. Okay, it is a little out of my house right now. So I'm trying to get the little to bed. It is already 8 o'clock, you guys. This is a very long process, but it's been 85 minutes. So I am now going to stop that heat. And that's kind of where my PSI has been hanging out, which is totally fine. The step is going to take a while for it to kind of depressurize. Um, don't touch anything during this time. Find something to do. I am going to be doing some more canning um, this evening. <laughs> so I am going to work on prepping a few things, getting some laundry swapped, getting the little kids in bed. And, um, yeah, I will bring you back when this is done depressurizing. Okay, it has been 52 minutes, and it has finally reached zero, but this is still up. So you need to wait for that to go down before you can open your pressure canner. All right, this has finally come down after about an additional four minutes. Now you can take your regulator off. At this time, you can also take your whole entire lid off, um, but personally, I like to just let it vent because it is super, super hot. I just like to let it vent for an extra um, minute or two. As you can see, I just twisted the lid off, took it off, and then just have it cracked a little bit. All right, you guys, so I have my seven quarts of canned corn done. Um, they are going to be cooling now for the next 12 to 24 hours. After about the first 12 to 14 hours, I usually just 
um, take these rings off and um, wash up the jars and label them. Um, sometimes I wait the full 24 hours just because I'm too busy to get to them any sooner. But these will be sitting here um, until tomorrow evening. And I am excited to have these up on the shelf. There's so many uses besides just a side dish of corn to use for canned corn. You can make corn fritters. You can make cornbread muffins with corn in them. Um, you can make different salsas, um, black bean salad. You can do, there's all types of things you can do. Um, Mexican street corn. That's one of my favorites. There is just all different types of things you could do. Throw them in a chicken tortilla soup or chicken taco soup. Just all sorts of things. Anything you'd use store-bought canned for. Um, but I like personally having it up on my shelf. And yeah, I am glad I'm going to be getting these up on my shelf. I hope you guys give this a try if you have not canned corn before. And um, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that I said everything thoroughly. All right, you guys, well, leave a comment down below if you have anything to add that I left out during this video, or if you are a beginner and you have a question on something that I did not cover during this video, please feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. And um, yeah, I hope you give this a try. If you like these types of videos, the canning and food preservation, go ahead and hit the like button. And also, if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, and we'd love to have you here. And um, that way you don't miss any videos coming out. There's going to be a lot more food preservation videos coming out. As I have a lot of canning to do. So I will see you guys on the next video. And until then, take care and God bless.